Well then, thank you for the introduction and good morning everyone. Um, today I'll be talking about the development of single cell sprite that we have been working with the Gutman lab in order to start mapping out higher order nuclear structures within single cells. So as this community is well aware, we know that DNA is hierarchically organized. We know that DNA does not arrange itself stochastically inside the nucleus. We do see regions of organization from a top-down view. So as we start at the chromosomal level, we know that chromosomes tend to arrange themselves within chromosome territories, as more transcriptionally active chromosomes tend to lie along the nuclear interior, and the more transcriptionally inactive ones tied, uh, lie along the lamina. If we zoom into these chromosome territories, we again see this division between these active and inactive compartments, termed as these termed as A B compartments, respectively. And if we zoom in even further, we can look at regions of topologically associated domains, also known as TADs, containing the proper promoters and enhancers necessary to regulate gene expression. And we note that these TADs are separated from other TADs with these boundary proteins such as CTCF and cohesin. And one of the big questions in the community is trying to figure out whether these same regions of chromosome architecture has been observed at the single cell level. And indeed, we do see the same arrangement of chromosome architecture as we start looking at single cells. So we have the um, researchers who have been working on single cell high C have been able to observe both chromosome territories and these active inactive compartments. And folks on the imaging side have begun to look at TAD-like structures at the single cell level. And we know that proximity ligation from the single cell high C methods have set the foundation for studying pairwise interactions in single cells and seeing these um, types of chromosomal features. And, um, but we want to look at higher order DNA complexes. We need to be able to expand beyond pairwise interactions, especially at the single cell level. So for an example, let's have a scenario where we have two cells containing two very similar um, genome profiles. And in this case, we'll focus on this DNA complex in the middle, which happens to be the same organization of both cells. Visually, we can see that all six DNA fragments are part of the same DNA complex, indicating that they're all in close spatial proximity. However, when we perform proximity ligation, the limitation in capturing only pairwise interactions makes us miss some contacts that will complete the global profile of this individual DNA complex. As a result, we can only get a local overview of what interactions are present in a given complex at the single cell level. We can use these bulk met um, methods to generate DNA contacts, and when we work with multiple cells, eventually we'll capture all of these DNA contacts. But when we're working with a single cell, we only have a single copy of the genome to work with, and every um, contact that we capture here will count. So if you look at this more quantitatively, we can look at a very simple model where we have two um, molecules of DNA up for ligation and try to figure out the maximum number of pairs um, we can attain by proximity ligation and um, compare it to the maximum number of combinations we could expect. In a very simple model where we only have two molecules, at most we can only expect one pair from either um, approach. But even when we start expanding to um, very um, slightly larger um, complexes containing four molecules, we can see that the number of combinations we begin to miss begins to scale quite a bit, we, where we can only obtain two pairwise interactions from proximity ligation, as opposed to the six that we can um, theoretically obtain. If we start looking at um, DNA complexes containing more and more DNA molecules for ligation, we can see that the, um, the rate that we can obtain these pairwise um, combinations begins to expand, um, increase rapidly relative to the number of pairs obtainable from proximity ligation. So we need to be able to find a way to capture all of these different combinations to create that global profile at the single cell level. Fortunately, we have our collaborators here um, Mitch, we, um, in Mitch Gutman's lab who have developed um, Sprite to globally capture all of these pairwise contacts where we split the complexes across a 96 full plate and all of the DNA molecules associated with the complex receive the same barcode and therefore we are able to map all the corresponding DNA molecules and interactions back to each other. So the question that we're interested in is how are we able to preserve cell-specific information so we know where these spatial contacts are originating from and yet again globally capture all DNA contacts at the single cell level. So in collaboration with the Gutman Lab, we have been developing a single cell sprite method that will allow us to look at these higher order structures. So the way that we proceed with this method is very similar to how we start with HiC, in which we cross-link cells, 
Here we're using a mouse embryonic stem cell line as our model. We then proceed to isolate the nuclei from the cells and porate the nuclear membrane in order to allow for enzymes and other reagents to diffuse inside the nucleus for, to perform biological reactions, and then, but doesn't allow for these protein DNA complexes to diffuse out. From there, we, we proceed to perform an in-nuclei DNA digestion to chew up um, the, DNA, uh, the chromatin into smaller protein DNA fragments. Once we have achieved that, we want to be, before we break the nuclei open to label all of the spatially proximal um, DNA complexes, we want to be able to preserve the cell-specific information contained inside each nucleus. And the way that we do that is by using combinatorial barcoding to label all of the complexes in nuclei. And this is fortunate for us because the nucleus serves as a compartment for transporting the complexes from, um, from one well to the next. So the way that this works is we split the nuclei across a 96 well plate, where ideally each nucleus will fall into a different well, and each of the wells contain a differently barcoded adapter in there. Once you've performed, performed the end nuclei ligation to ligate these barcoded adapters to the ends of these DNA fragments, we then pull the nuclei together and repeat this process of split and pull until we achieve enough combinations. In this case, we're doing three rounds of combinatorial barcoding, so in this case, we might have a, um, a case where two nuclei might fall into the same well and receive the same cell-specific barcode, but then we can reduce the likelihood of two nuclei containing the same barcode in the end as we repeat the rounds of combinatorial barcoding. So after three rounds of combinatorial barcoding, we are able to generate over 800,000 unique combinations, therefore ensuring that we have single cell uh, specificity between all of the various DNA complexes in single cells. So once we do this DNA um, cell-specific barcoding, we want to filter out any sort of clumps that might have emerged from the upstream processes so we can isolate single cells. So we pass the nuclei through a filter to, single, um, to sort, um, separate out clumps from singles. And from there, we have a pool, um, a batch of single cell nuclei available for us to work with. From there, we, we choose 1,500 nuclei to proceed with the downstream steps of labeling DNA complexes. Um, with these 1,500 nuclei, we then sonicate very lightly in order to break apart um, nuclei to reveal these DNA complexes. And now we don't care if they begin to mix together because all these DNA complexes contain the initial cell-specific barcode. We then couple these DNA complexes to NHSBs to provide a um, way to transport these complexes from um, one well to the next as we proceed to do SPRITE as previously um, elaborated by our collaborators. So we do three rounds of combinatorial barcoding to label all of the DNA molecules in each of the individual complexes. And by the end of the barcoding process, each of the DNA complexes contain a total of six barcodes, which when we reverse cross-sync and sequence them, we compare which DNA molecules were associated with each other based on the um, barcodes that were obtained. We can break these barcodes into di two different sets. The first set of barcodes are the cell-specific barcodes, the ones that provide information about the cell origin. In this case, we happen to have an example where two of the complexes um, tend to co came from the same cell as indicated by the same barcode combination, while the last complex comes from a different cell as indicated by the different barcode combination here. And the last um, three sets, three barcodes are the complex-specific barcodes, the ones that tell us which pieces of DNA are in close proximity to each other inside the nucleus. And with these two pieces of information, we can start beginning to build a global overview of spatial DNA structure at the single cell level. So before we proceed any further, we want to be able to show that we can accurately identify single cells with our new method. And in order to do that, we did, we did a mouse-human mixing experiment where we mixed mouse and human cells in equal amounts and proceeded with the um, single cell sprite method as described previously. And what we can see here is that we see about 97% of single cells representing a single species, either health, human or mouse. And we see that very few percent of cells are actually mixed together. So this gives us high um, this presents like high accuracy in our method in being able to identify single cells. <clears throat> 
when we look at coverage across the genome, we can see that when we bend these um, coverage maps at 100 kilobase resolution, we can see nearly uniform coverage across the genome, across these 20 cells chosen here, which, can, which gives us um, faith in our ability to um, be able to barcode our nuclei without any sort of fragmentation or leaking during um, this entire um, procedure. Um, one of the things I had alluded to in my introduction was the idea that we can generate um, a more global overview because of the way we are um, tagging all of the complexes at, in single cells. So what we have here is a bar graph demonstrating the median contacts per cell that we can obtain from our method compared to the previously published single cell high C methods. And what we can see here is that we can obtain um, at least two orders of magnitude more contacts per single cell compared to what's been published previously, giving us hopes in what we can start to see at, um, in terms of higher order nuclear structures in single cells. So now that we kind of laid the groundwork in looking at um, invalidating this method, we want to start seeing if this method can reconstruct these known chromosomal interactions um, against previously published data. So we took the ensemble of our 1500 cells and we're plotting it in the top right half of each of these heat maps and we're using Sprite as a comparison to look at um, chromosomal structure. And what we see here is we are able to map out regions of, of genome structure uh, when we compare Sprite with single cell Sprite, where we see chromosome territories along the diagonal here. We can see the division of active and inactive compartments when we look at chromosome two. And even when we zoom in, um, we can start to see topologically associated domains forming, all at fairly high, um, and we can, um, Furthermore, when we start scaling down the number of cells that we use to compare between single cell Sprite and Sprite, we see that even as we zoom down to look at 10 cells, we can still reconstruct features of genome organization between these very few cells and the bulk method, kind of elaborating the idea that we could get high coverage for each cell and, we, and still see these features of chromosome um, organization. Um, when we start looking at comparisons between single cells, we can see that um, where we have cell one up here, cell two down here, we can see that in comparison to what we've been seeing in bulk, we can see regions of chromosome architecture that might start to become similar across um, single cells. But again, we can we, um, continue to explore the heterogeneity between single cell contacts. And a better way we are able to look at this is by looking at cell cycle as a validation of our single cell data. So we are using um, the methods that were previously published from Peter Fraser's group, where they um, use single cell high C to look at um, various cells throughout the cell cycle phase. So in this paper, they were able to sort cells by facts to separate groups of cells corresponding to stages of the cell cycle, and then perform single cell high C in order to understand the relationship between the distance between contacts and the corresponding phase in the cell cycle. And they're able to demonstrate that they could see the remodeling of chromosome architecture as the cells enter and exit mitosis, as evidenced by the heat maps here at each of the various stages of the cell cycle, and both quantitatively where you can see a progression of um, mit mitosis as a, as a relationship of these short range contacts. So given our single cell data, and using the constraints and thresholding from the original paper, we wanted to see if we could recreate, recreate the cell cycle phase um, with our data set. And from the parameters, we were able to isolate cells that match the conditions corresponding to each cell cycle, as indicated by the plot on the left. And once we did that, we pulled these cells together corresponding to each phase and plotted the corresponding heat maps accordingly, showing the similar um, entering and exiting of mitosis um, in our single cell data. So hopefully I was able to show you today that we have um, developed an assay to start looking at higher order genome organization at the single cell level. Um, one of the benefits of this method is that it doesn't require any complicated equipment. So this can easily be, be done by um, researchers in any lab. And it's definitely scalable to work with thousands of cells at a time due to the limited limitless um, combinatorial barcoding um, we can do. Um, we can also reconstruct features in genome organization in as few as 10 cells, and we generate what we see at least 100 times more contacts per cell um, compared to the best single cell high C method. 
And with that, I would like to thank the people I have worked closely with, both in our lab and in collaboration with the Gutman Lab. And with that, I will take any questions.